Okay. Well, thanks everyone for joining us on a new, another Facebook Live episode. I um, am fortunate enough to have a dear friend you know, joining me today, uh, but quite an accomplished you know, person in her own right. Uh, Ella is a major is a 25 year vegan. She's founder of Sexy Fit Vegan. Uh, she has a master's degree in social work and counseling. She's a certified wellness coach. She's a certified professional trainer. She's a published author. She's a national speaker. <laughs> she was the uh, one of the judges for the World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship, the first vegan bodybuilding championship in the world. Um, she is a vegan nutrition consultant, and she has just about to launch uh, the Vegan Co Life Coach Academy. So congratulations on all your success, all your work, and um, not only your work as an accomplishment, but the work that you've done to greatly change and affect people's lives in a positive way. That is really what I want to key in here. And what we're going to focus most of this conversation is on empowerment. So I just want to say thank you for all you do. Thank you for joining us. And let's talk empowerment. For me, um, I was one of those what I call uh, an inside out vegan. I started with a change that happened inside from an emotional state, and then it became something I put into action. The changes were externalized based on a very internal shift, an internal change. Now, I know most people today, it's, it's the opposite, and there's nothing wrong with that. Getting to the change is the important part. But the, either through changing their diet or watching a movie or some sort of other external, hearing all these wonderful doctors, wonderful speakers, people who are making a positive influence like yourself, um, reaching people and having that change happen externally and then gradually causing a more internal shift. Um, but I think it's when we can get to that internal part that's when the real change starts to happen. That's when things lock in, things become life-changing, they become lifelong changes. And, and um, so talk about that, your experience, one, how, how you changed uh, 25 years ago and what set that emotion, and then two, how you've used that to really bring forth empowerment in the work you do. Sure. And first of all, thank you, Jeff, for having me here today. I'm really honored to be on with you and consider you one of my one of my dearest friends as well. Uh, that being said, so my own story, uh, 25 years ago when I went vegan, it was actually 30, 30, 32 years ago, I think, that I stopped eating animal products. I was uh, seven years old, so I guess that's 33 years ago now. Um, but yeah, I was seven years old, uh, really made that connection, basically, uh, between the food on my plate and the animal that it was. And I knew in my heart that that wasn't something I was um, I was okay with. So in, in seven years old, it's an interesting uh, year because Bruce Lipton's, if my internet is bad, I can go in the other room. If it, if it cuts out again, I'll, I'll go in the other room and plug it in. Oh, all right, it was just a short blip. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully that won't happen. Yeah, um, yeah, seven years old, because that's when we're, we're really, our subconscious gets programmed. Those first seven years of our life are so vital um, from studying uh, people like Dr. Bruce Lipton. Uh, so, so you think about that, and I was right at the cusp there where things were starting to get pretty much um, kind of, of, of locked into my subconscious when I figured out what was on my plate and said, that's not okay with me. And, and really, I couldn't understand why it was okay with anybody at that point. And I thought people just didn't know, right? So I went on and I was, you know, in elementary school writing, writing little papers about how, why are we eating animals? It doesn't make any sense. We've got so many other things that we can eat. Uh, get to be 15, understand the whole industry of all the industries, how they're connected and the cruelty involved in all of them. So at 15, I went totally vegan, got into the animal rights activism. And what I learned uh, through that was, you know, my child, 
in my child mind, I said, people just don't know. Once they know, then they're going to immediately go vegan. Of course, why wouldn't you? Perfect. So I would like sit in cages on the side of the road um, to demonstrate, you know, here's what happens to these animals, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it was it was a little bit of a harsh awakening. And this was quite a while mm -hmm. ago when it was very, uh, you know, this information was not readily available to people uh, as much as it is now. And it was, it was, it was a tough realization, uh, Jeff, that a lot of people didn't want to know. They weren't ready no. to ready to know the truth. And once you know, you can't not know, right? So right. ignorance is bliss, as they say. So a lot of people aren't ready to know because they're not ready to make any changes. And that right. cognitive dissonance that happens when your values and your actions are out of alignment is yeah. painful. It's not, people don't want that. Uh, so, so that was tough. Um, but when I went into the fitness industry, which is my other passion, mm -hmm. you know, I found other ways to get people to open their minds. And that basically for me was, was becoming, you know, this walking billboard for a fit vegan, uh, and becoming a personal trainer. So it was my, like you said, it was like, okay, people then were attracted because they wanted to have a strong, lean, fit body. So yeah. then they were open. So that's very external. They weren't ready right. for the internal part yet. Yeah. But it's isn't it interesting that sometimes people will come into it um, for a reason like I want to get, I want to look like you. Um, right. I want a body like yours. And then or I don't want to, or I don't want to die, right? Well, yeah, but you know what? <laughs> I think, well, this was in my twenties. Um, right. you know, the younger people are thinking less about the younger yeah, population. The younger is, people, true. Yeah, they're thinking less about that. Now, now that I'm working with people that are 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even, um, yes, things things start to change in that regard. But um, but the point is they would come in at it, at it from a different angle. And then when they kind of let their guard down and were able to open their mind and their heart around like, oh, maybe I am willing to make some changes and oh, okay, here's what's going yeah. on. Then the, the, the reasoning and the, um, the expansion does come from the inside and says, I do want my values, uh, my actions to match what I care about. I don't wanna hurt animals. I do wanna live a long, healthy life. Mm -hmm. um, I want more and, and are able to look at the bigger picture. Does that, does that make sense? To totally, totally. Yeah, and and in my younger years, once I really kind of get reached that awakening, um, I, I really traveled around the world. I went to forty eight different countries. I went all over the islands of four or five different continents, and it was amazing seeing each different culture's way of or ways of arriving at that shift how to create that shift, whether using spiritual or religious uh, practices. You know, I was, I was working with um, Native Americans and we were doing sweat lodges. And one of the examples of the sweat lodge I was really getting understanding is that you put yourself in an extreme heat condition and it causes just a massive release of mm -hmm. sweat, right? Physical release. But in that massive physical shift of release, also, I started the emotional release, emotions mm -hmm. started pouring out of me, started crying. I was like, what is going on with me? And then this mental leap was just ideas just flying through my head of, God, all kinds of stuff. It was just amazing. And I realized at that point, wow, we can take any aspect of our physical life and shift it, move it. And the rest of our self, our emotional, our spiritual, our psychological self will also tend to want to shift because we're a whole human being. And, and, and I love that about yoga. I love that about meditation. I love that you can take any aspect, your mind, your physical body, your emotional state. You can have breakthroughs through just shifting emotions, mm -hmm. shifting perspectives. It's amazing that so many cultures have so many different beautiful ways of creating that shift. And I think in the United States, we're really focused on our physical form and our diet. And like you, I, I said, okay, well, if that's where a lot of energy, a lot of folks, look, we eat three times a day or more. Um, and, and we all have to move. We have to move, <laughs> you know, otherwise we die. Physical, um, you know, fitness is, is a part, whether it's just simple walking or exercise or full on sports, it is to some degree. And the more you put into that, the more you can experience that shift. So it's like, well, what a great place to start. It sounds like in some ways you've come to that as too, but 
once you've got that, you have a sense of, I did that. Mm. I changed my diet and something happened. I started exercising and I see the difference in my body. I feel the difference. I sleep better. I, I literally am happier. And that's a beautiful thing. What has been your experience in a way that you create part of that shift in people and getting to that source of empowerment? Because once you have that experience and you know it's yours, for me at least, I was like, okay, what else do I do? What else can I try? Because oh, this, this feels great, you know? Yeah, that's that's the thing, this empowerment thing. That's how we make it go from just making changes yeah. to making a true transformation. And that word is is very much overused and I think misused a lot of the time uh, because the the difference between change and transformation, a transformation is a, is a total change and basically coming from your core, like yeah. from coming from your core beliefs about who you think you are, what you think you're capable of, how you see, uh, you know, your perspective about the world, other people, animals, the planet, um, that's where true transformation comes in. And I think, you know, we throw it around a lot of times like, oh, I transformed my body because I changed my body. Your body can change back. Our bodies are going to change, right? right? But transformation is so much deeper and bigger. And we have to know the first step is that we have to know that we are capable of changing that just because we have a thought doesn't mean it's true. Right. right? Or that we believe it. Because or that I we believe it. Yes. I think in, in getting to that internal belief where, you know, it's funny as people would uh, have come to me often and said, uh, oh, yeah, you know, that's that's probably better for you. But we're not 100 percent sure. No, I'm 100 percent sure there is zero doubt that this is a better way of life. Um, and when you just the foundation of compassion, uh, you, you can't use any of the other excuses, whether it's science. I'm big on science. And it's great to have scientific validation that compassion is the right thing, but there's also science out there that says otherwise. So to me, the, the truest truth of that is grounded in, are you really doing good for others? Not just for yourself, but for others, uh, including the environment, the animals, other people, are you being a positive influence? And, and, and I think being an example is a great way to do that. One, it attracts people. People say, I want what you have. How do you get there? <laughs> so they're a little bit more open to it. But it also shows them it can be done. It is possible. There is an experience that I'm not knowing right now that, that, that I could have. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think when we talk about compassion, we, we do always think about it as compassion for others and animals and the planet. But I think a lot of people and a lot of the people that I work with, it, it comes across as selfishness, but it's actually that a lot of people don't have compassion for themselves as the root. And I, I think if we don't have that sense of, of self-worth, of, of love for ourselves, then we really can't truly spread it um, to other other people and make make the positive impact on the world that I think most people deep down really do want. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think the emotional eating thing, right? A lot of times mm -hmm. that is coming from a place of emptiness, like unfulfillment. Yeah. Like I'm not living my purpose. I'm not, mm -hmm. it, it's like this kind of void that yes. a lot of people want to fill. Um, so it can connect in those ways, you know, differently maybe than we we generally think about it and and it's it's when you get to that experience and you know that shift it's it's i don't know it's there's some experiences that are really hard to communicate to someone else who has not experienced them mm -hmm. uh, there's a sense of disbelief you know uh when i first met my wife she's like you're so happy i thought you were phony and I'm like, okay, and I get that. And I understand that. And the more she got to know me, the more she saw it was genuine, that it was genuinely just that positive and happy a person because of the way I was viewing the world. 
with wonder, with awe, with thankfulness, with gratitude, coming from a place of learning, of being open, of being vulnerable, that let me constantly be myself in awe. If I am coming from a place where I know what's right, well, then you have stopped your openness to learning. You've stopped your input. You know, I, I, when I opened up my heart, the biggest change I, I, I experienced was my mind was filled with ideas. Mm -hmm. It's because I was allowing an emotional channel to come through and then my mind could say, wow, I've got so many new toys to play with, you know, this idea and this idea and this. And my mind just lit up like a candle. It was amazing. And, and people, especially guys, and I'm sorry to say that and, and, and in, in what I'm about to describe, because I know it in different ways, women can close themselves off just as well. Um, but I think guys have this this societal norm that says you must be aggressive, you must be assertive, you must be mm -hmm. right, otherwise you look weak, you know, and all these things just shut us off from being open to the inputs, the valuable information, the experiences that can shift us and cause us change. That shift is where we grow. That's where we become stronger. It's mm -hmm. not a weakness to be vulnerable. It's not a weakness to allow that input to come in. Oh, it's so true, Jeff. And I, I, First of all, your story, I just, you start to like say pieces of it right now. And I like my whole body goes into chills because, because you came on our podcast, uh, the vegan life coach podcast, whoever's listening and Jeff's interview on that is just uh, extraordinary. So anyway, uh, side note, but I think also one of the things that that reminds me of, well, first of all, the vulnerability piece, that was, that was really a turning point in my life. And it happened much later for me, it only happened, you know, five years ago that I decided that I didn't need to be perfect to the outside world. I didn't need to uh, hide uh, my struggles. It didn't mean that I was going to give veganism a bad name <laughs> because that's right. that's really the place that was coming from. I, mm -hmm. you know, I thought if if people knew I was having struggles, then and especially back like when I was in my twenties, it was like if I got a cold, oh, you need to eat some meat. Like that, anything that was nice. possibly wrong, it was you need to eat some meat. You, it's because you're vegan. You got to be scrawny and and unhealthy. And this was quite a quite a while ago. I know that the things have changed a lot since then. But but when I let go of that that need to appear perfect, yeah. uh, it's when everything changed for me in such a huge way. And I I wrote like a a blog series. And I just let it all out, everything. I hadn't told, I mean, I hadn't told anybody half of that stuff that I was going through. And when I pressed, you know, clicked on on publish, I just, I remember that moment and the power that moment held for me and the freedom that that created and the weight that that lifted. Yes. Everything changed. And I just wish that on everybody. And that's one of the big things that we do in Vegan Life Coach Academy is give people a safe space to be vulnerable. And I think a lot of people are met with a lot of resistance or judgment or ridicule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have that certainly for ourselves um, that makes it scary to be vulnerable. Well, and, and especially in social media where yes. you have everybody attacking everybody and especially 2020 seems to be the year, year of this right now, unfortunately. Yeah. So thank you again for being one of those bright spots, posting positive uh, notes and stuff. But, but for me, such a powerful tool that I think is so often missed in our society is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, those that can go out there and treat uh, anger and judgment with, hey, you know, is there anything I can do to help you? And, and go back right in the face of that and try to connect, you know. That's my heroes. Those are the people that impress me. Those are the people that I look up to and admire. You know, not the, the people out there trying to be right or, you know, you should do this and not do that or, you know, you're wrong for doing this or you're all this judgment, all this negativity, it tears us all down and it makes us all weaker as a people. And, you know, we really need, we have the opportunity right now to show strength by not responding, reacting to that negativity and instead saying, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to share some love with you anyway, 
regardless of what was going on here. That's powerful to me. Those are the real weightlifters that are lifting some really heavy weights. You know, anybody can physically lift some heavy weights if they have the physical strength for it, but not too many people are willing to lift that emotional weight and say, I'm not going to react to that. I'm not going to buy into all that negativity and just pile on to the judgment and, and stuff like that. I'm going to do something different and I'm going to show love, even if people are commenting negatively. Oh, yeah. A thousand percent. I, I think also one thing that helps me in those situations is to let go of assumptions mm. about other people. And I, mm. you know, it's so the mind is so amazing because we can literally have one thought and it can change everything. If we yeah. just think that person who, you know, just yep. passed by me on the on the highway honking, like whatever, and you want to go and have your road rage and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> You just think, you know, what could be what could be going on in that person's life, you know, right now? What what are they experiencing? What are they going through? We don't know and we're not going to know. But if that is helpful in taking that edge off, you know, and saying, let me pause here. I don't have to let that ruin my day. Beyond that, how can I now spread more love so that the energy is out there and, and really um, circulating? and being a contributor to that positivity uh, instead of buying into the negative. Um, and it's funny, side note, uh, you, sometimes I'm, sometimes I feel so positive so much of the time that I'm like, I'm not very fun sometimes. I'm like, you know, you're like with a group of people and I've got friends of all different types, you know, and they're, they're like bitching about things. And I'm like, man, I, Wish I could, you know, I kind of wish I could just chime in, but <laughs> none of that bothers me. Like it really doesn't bother me. So it's just a waste of time and energy to even, why are we talking about this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Just little yeah. silly stuff that people complain about. And it's yeah. like, where is our energy going? Yeah. Where is our energy going? Where do we want it to go? Well, and I think it's so much a reflective of what's going on internally. So much of what, if you have a lot of junk going on inside you, frustrations, angers, resentments, even self-doubts and the self-sabotage that we do yeah. to ourselves all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough, like you said, you know, or, you know, I, I, I'm not succeeding in business. I'm not succeeding in my relationship. I had another argument at work, you know, just all those. And then we externalize it. And what we do to validate our own experience is go out and find all <laughs> the other arguments to say, oh, there it is. It's all outside of me. And that's the cause of it. And but just the opposite. If we can flip that switch, flip that conversation to say, no, I'm going to accept responsibility from this. I'm going to release that because I don't need it and it's not working for me. And I'm not being very helpful to other people by contributing my own negativity. So I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to go inside either through meditation or a great workout or just sitting and being with myself and saying, Jeff, what is really going on with you? You know. <laughs> And I, I came in deep meditation to a place one time that I just said, and, and like you said, it's not selfish. It is self-full. When you can say, the best thing I can offer others is a happy me, because that is the best uh, positive influence I can have on others. And when you can show people happiness, it will stop them. It will make them think, okay, they're happy. How can I get like that? And I really literally had that experience that led to a, the most amazing shift in my life is I saw somebody who was really happy and I wanted that. Mm -hmm. And and that's what started that whole shift in me. And But it did take that letting go. It did take getting real with myself. It did take owning it, stopping the blame game of it all being out there. It's not out there. The problems are not out there and that's where the empowerment comes from for me is owning that re-owning that and say that is me if i can release this and look if it's out there you can't change it you can't force change on anyone but you can change it if you own the problem that's going inside yourself and it's amazing that when you do release that whatever it is that you begin to see beauty 
and things. You begin to see rightness and things. You begin to see the love everywhere else around you. And, and that's, that's to me, one of the beautiful rewards that comes from that is that empowerment that mm -hmm. now that I own that, I feel I am choosing, I'm stopped reacting to things. And now I am choosing what I want to do with my life. I have my life back. <laughs> yes, it's getting, let, releasing that victim yes. mentality. That is empowerment. That's when it happens, when we take full responsibility for every action that we take. Um, and I, I, what you just said reminded me of one really important tool that we use at Vegan Life Coach Academy is, is vocabulary. Uh, it's shifting our vocabulary because yes. it's, it turns into every statement when we make is an affirmation, is a yes. is a mantra. So little <laughs> things like, I mean, I quit saying I have to do yes. anything, anything. We say it. If you start noticing right now, <laughs> don't see so you know, we say it so every true. other thing. Oh no, no, I have to go do this. I have to do this. I have to. We don't have to do any of that. We give our power away when we're saying that we have to. We choose to. I choose to get up at five o'clock in the morning despite being tired because I want to, you know, because I have goals. I choose to, you know, meal prep on Sundays. Um, I don't have to meal prep. I, I choose to because I love and respect myself and my body and what I put in it and I respect yes. the planet. You know, I, I choose to, so I choose to, or I get to, or I am grateful to be able to. Some people don't, aren't able to get up in the morning and go to work, right? right. right. So, you know, that's just one example, but vocabulary, I think, is another huge way for us to start to reprogram. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and you know, when people ask me about vegans, oh, you can't eat that, or you can't eat... No, no, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, there's a difference. This is a choice. This is an empowered choice. It is my choice to do this because I know that it's better for me. I love working out. I love going to get a great workout because I know what it does. I am connected to the end result. A lot of times we get into have tos or don't want tos or can'ts or whatever, all those because we're not connected with the result. We're only connecting with the, 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 the work. Right. What we forget about is the result of that work. When you eat well, you feel better. When you exercise, you feel better. If you connect with the result, every time you're doing the action, you look exactly, when you go to work, you get a paycheck. <laughs> How good does that paycheck feel when you get some power to go spend it? But you put that work in. So that work needs to be more uh, intricately tied to your result. You know, people say, oh, you know, you look great, you know, physically, but they don't connect the work that is required to do that. But I celebrate that work because of the result. You know? yes. yes, yes. And also that's connected to, to your why, right? Yeah. And it, why is a good tool, um, not only to think about the result that you want, um, but also something that Stephanie is our head mindset coach. She, she tells people that um, have issues uh, with emotional eating, stress eating, just kind of going and grabbing for whatever is available um, to, to be able to pause and ask yourself, why, why am I choosing to, why am I choosing this bag of chips? And if you like the answer, go for it. If you don't like the answer, it's time to reevaluate. Um, yeah. And yeah. she does that. It, that can go also like I'll be at a I don't eat sugar anymore. I, I completely um, don't eat refined sugar. I don't even want it anymore. It's it was a detox process to get here, but it's been many years now. I don't even want it. But if I was somebody somewhere and they had vegan a cake with sugar in it and they handed me a piece, I might say I'm going to eat some of this vegan pea, uh, vegan uh, a cake because I want to be here celebrating, even though I know it's not the best thing. I, it's still yes. a conscious choice. It's yes. a choice. So you as long the, as we're making the result, choice, you know the outcome. I'm, I'm gonna feel like crap. Weighing, <laughs> you're weighing the uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. the situation with the consequence. And, and, and we've gotten so much out of that where we're told what to eat through advertising, through socialization, everybody else is doing it, just becomes normal. We turn off that conscious choice, the, the conscious awareness 
when we can really get back into that and start making decisions where we're controlling the outcome, it's that, that classic, you know, everybody eats a standard American diet. Everybody starts to get sick and gain weight and gain fat around 30 or 40. Everybody starts to get the disease states around 40 and 50 disease. You know, then they go on all the things. It's the path you can get off that treadmill and live your own life as a physically healthy, happy, enjoyable human being, disease-free the whole way. That is your choice. That is not a destiny. <laughs> yes, and everybody watching this right now is, is doing something huge by connecting with people that are on a similar path and yes. connecting with people like you, Dev, who, who walks the walk and has been doing that for a long time and is willing to share and wants to share. And it's your, your mission in life to share and help people. That's what you're here for. And the people, everyone watching now is connecting to that and, and is, is watching this. That is a huge, you know, action right there. Just being here watching, watching this. Uh, to me, there is, has been no bigger joy other than my own personal breakthroughs for myself, but there's been no bigger joy than helping other people find to whatever degree that power, that empowerment within themselves to take control of their lives and, and carve out a life that is happy, that is healthy, that is enjoyable, that they can feel proud about, mm -hmm. that they can share with others is such an amazing gift. That kind of love to me is worth everything. You know, people say, oh, you know, you do a supplement company case, you're trying to make money. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> that is not it at all. I wanted to help people get optimal nutrition into their body so they can experience what that is. The rest of your path is up to you. I want to give people a stepping stone to get to a better place and keep on that path wherever it takes you an improvement of your life, and then pass that forward, pay it forward to others. It's such, it will bring you so much joy. <laughs> Trust yeah. So speaking of which, you have an amazing service that you're doing right now with the coaching service. Talk about that and share, because I want others to know what you're doing, because I think you have a very valuable service that I think a lot of people could really gain from. So talk about your coaching. Yes, this came at a really opportune time because we've been working on a, uh, creating and launching the Vegan Life Coach Academy, which is basically a, a one-stop shop for, for true transformation. And it's open to basically, we're there to, to empower vegan and vegan curious people mm -hmm. uh, to adopt a healthy, fit vegan lifestyle, to master your mindset, and to move through the world with confidence, passion, and purpose. That's what it's all about. So it's it's so much bigger than fitness and nutrition, which are huge components of it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the foundation is our self-empowerment coaching system. We basically coach you to coach yourself. That's true empowerment. When mm -hmm. you have that and you know that as long as you have yourself moving through the through life, whatever comes your way, you have the tools, you have the, the thought process, you have the sense of power and worth to um to get through it and get through it in the healthiest way possible and and beyond being happy um i think part of being truly happy is living a meaningful life a purposeful life right. um so everybody who joins not only uh you know we want people that are really wanting to create the life of their dreams but to also then use that to inspire others and make a positive impact on the world so we do it for ourselves we do it for animals. We do it for other people. We do it for the planet. That's what Vegan Life Coach Academy is all about. And I'm I, I'm beyond excited. We open the doors Sunday. We're open for six days. We we are closing it after six days for a few months um, because we want a cohesive group. We're going to all really learn some powerful tools together. So we want it to. We don't want people just trickling in. So we're going to have a, a a six day period. We're going to close the doors. We'll open them again in a few months. That's great. And and I love what you just said very casually in there. That is a learning experience. And that is what makes a dynamic living, breathing. So many people come up with systems and, you know, they you hear, oh, I'm a coach and this is my system. If you learn my six phase system 
And, and it's not, because it's not one size fits all. It's individuals. We're all individuals with our, our unique baggage, our unique concerns, our unique goals, and our unique desires, and different pathways of getting to that. I think what you're offering now is teaching them how to use tools that help them get to the place where they want to. And instead of saying, just follow me and do as I say, and you'll you'll feel like I do. And that's not the way it works. No, no, we got to give guidance in a way that that well, this the, the topic of this whole this whole talk is em, empowers people, right. empowers people. And that doesn't involve me telling you what to do and you doing it. That's that's not the definition of empowerment. So we're doing it the other way. It takes a little more work. Don't get me wrong. Right. on on everybody's part but the results are 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 life are for a lifetime you know um so it's worth so, it so bring your openness bring your willingness to change yeah. <laughs> and when you're ready to do that then get serious and and um then you can learn some tools that's awesome. How how can they get in touch with you? Talk about your links and how to get in touch with you, how they can sign up a little bit about the program. Yeah, absolutely. Veganlifecoachacademy.com forward slash join is uh, where you'll go. We again open the doors Sunday, but we have a wait list. So anybody can get on right now. Our wait list people are going to get a little special bonus. So head on over there. Um, my other website is sexyfitvegan.com. That's been my brand for the last five years. We're just starting this kind of new um, new department. And uh, we're, yeah, we're really excited about it. Everything else is Sexy Fit Vegan and Vegan Life Coach Academy. Yeah, so uh, we had a couple questions, uh, a couple comments. Um, uh, John, uh, thanks, John, for joining us again, uh, saying I appreciate the dialogue, self-love, self-responsibility, and choice. Uh, uh, those, these, are the, these are not just words. These are things that when you put into action, you feel the difference. And, and, and when you can feel that difference, you know you're in the right place. And look, this is an, these are active verbs. <laughs> these are stuff that you have to do regularly. I, I remember uh, Ram Dass, uh, when a reading from Ram Dass one time, and he's saying, you know, I spent six months with a guru. I was in the, silent the whole, I didn't say a word, nothing but meditation. I was so floating. I was seeing auras. My life had just blown up wide open. And I'm coming to New York to give a whole talk on this. I'm riding on the bus and a woman walks by in hot pants and you know what I think about. And he goes, it all just goes away. And he goes to his guru and he goes, oh my God, what happened? And he goes, it's a practice. It's not an end point. Yes. And that's what I love about, you know, what you're doing is giving people tools so that they can continue to practice this. Um, and it's There's funny, no that another phrase was, um, uh, practice makes perfect. And I don't agree with that at all, because if you practice bad habits, that's not perfection. <laughs> so perfect practice makes perfect is a better. <laughs> yes. And and you got to have the know the tools and know how what your ideal goals are so that you are focusing on the right things and not getting yourself to goals that when you arrive at the goal, go, why did I want this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And it's, yes, we got to surround ourselves with people that will help us in that practice yes. um, or else we fall back because it's, it's consistency. Got to practice over and over day after day until uh, like you said, it's, it's the unhealthy habit uh, is replaced by the healthy habit. Right. That's called re, re uh, programming your subconscious. So yes. that's what we're going, going no, for. Cause that's no a permanent. Shift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is a working process. It's and working and process. that's, uh, that's, that's, what's great. Um, um, so in closing with some ideas, some, some things that are really happening with you, maybe currently with, with what you're doing, I know you got the big launch, so I know that's been an intensive uh, bit of work for you, but what's going on in your life too, as well, that you'd like to share. Yes, well, we've also got the the podcast. On the podcast, we share we share all sorts of things, stories. I am, like I said, I'm an open book now. I've had um, you know quite quite uh, interesting life experiences myself that I love to share. So we do that on the podcast. Um, and this this academy is going to be is my big project right now. So this nice. is this is what I'm focused on oh, yeah. and we're going to serve mm -hmm. yes, we're going to serve people and I just one more thing you said is that it, there's there's really no arrival, right? There's no arrival. So why rush the process? Why not embrace 
the process because once you get to where you think is going to be the arrival oh no there's going to be more that you want <laughs> until the day we die right indeed so there's, there's and, and, that, and that should be celebrated that yes. we get yes. that we get yes. to do more and more and more you know it's yes. not like oh guy i arrived and now i have to do more no you get yes. to do more yes. that's yes. the beautiful part about life absolutely <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, speaking of the podcast, uh, how can people tune in to watch the podcast? Where do they go? Uh, yes, if you want to go to sexyfitvegan.com forward slash podcast. Uh, I don't know if we can put these links in there. Um, that yeah. has all the links to go and all the major platforms, iTunes and Spotify and all that good stuff. It's called Vegan, the Vegan Life Coach Podcast. Vegan Life Coach Podcast. I'll grab those links from you. I'll post it in the thing so they'll live on the video for, for going forward so that people can tune in and watch. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure talking with you. It seems like every time we talk and connected from the very first time we connected at uh, the Vegan Influencers and Robert Cheek brought us all together. Thank you, Robert Cheek, for doing yeah, that. Thank you, right <laughs> um and, and just a connection that I think is going to be a lifelong friendship. And um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom, your your mental wisdom and your heart wisdom uh, with people here because empowerment is so important and it's one of the gifts that we can give ourselves. Um, I think forgiveness plays a big part in that. It really took some forgiveness and, and letting go of judgment for me to finally release into an empowered state. Um, but whatever it is for you, find your blocks, uh, get some help if you need it. Ex express yourself with others. Uh, you know, pe other people can see things in you that you cannot see sometimes that you're blind to. And, and emotionally, I understand that because our emotions, when we get hurt, when we get stressed, can be in defensive mode. And it's hard to get out of that defensive mode because we feel we're going to get hurt worse. And sometimes we have to let those defenses down to let that hurt go and be released. So we can be released from that pain because all of us at our core, I sincerely believe, are an empowered, loving, giving a human being. And that is a beautiful thing that we should all be sharing. And anything we can do to remove these judgments of ourselves and shine our bright light is going to make the world a better place. So it's not selfish, as you said. It's not. We all need to take on that responsibility because if you really want to help people, you can't do it until you are clear yourself. And it's a constant process, so it's never ending story. But the more the more you do it, the better it feels. That's for sure. Absolutely. Jeff, thank you for all you do for mm -hmm. people, for animals, for the world. Um, and thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. I hope to have you again soon and I uh, hope to hear more and follow you about uh what you're doing with people. Empowerment rocks. Anytime. <laughs> Thanks.